People have complimented me on my bravery, which is something I'm not particularly comfortable with because I don't think it's the right way of thinking about it. It's not how I think about it. I think, no, I'm just afraid of the right thing. It's not that I'm brave. I'm way more afraid of not saying what I have to say than I am of saying it. And the consequences of saying what I have had to say have been dramatic and sometimes very painful as all, and also extremely rewarding. Jordan Peterson has refused to conform to woke demands, and that has made him pretty controversial when he addresses woke culture. And as you might have seen, the woke mob has tried to shut him down many times. Free speech is something that he truly believes in, especially when it comes to the conversation about gender. Right, we're also in a very strange place where a lot of high-profile women will not say what they think a woman is. Yeah, well, we've accepted this preposterous hypothesis that your identity is only subjectively defined. And as I've tried to point out on some of my like in some of my lectures, the only people who think their identity is subjectively defined are two-year-olds. And I mean that technically, because two-year-olds are egocentric, which means they can't bring their identity in alignment with a social norm, which also means that two-year-olds can't play with other children. They can play beside them. Jordan Peterson was having a conversation on Piers Morgan's show about how woke people can't define what a woman is. Peterson believes that it's an overreach to force society to adopt a language that doesn't align with objective reality. And now even top government officials who are women are afraid to define what a woman is. The people who really push this, or, or the ideas that govern this, was a better way of thinking about it, there is no, this is a very difficult thing to understand. You think there's such a thing as reasonable conversation. Mm. That's not on the table for the radicals. No, it's not. See, reason, the, I, the, your notion of reasonable conversation is nothing but your insistence that your ethos is dominating. Jordan Peterson exposed the state of our society. Woke culture views gender as a social construct and often promotes the idea that gender identity is fluid. And then take advantage of vulnerable teenagers who are confused about their identity when they tell them to change their gender, using their vulnerability to fuel their movement. Professionals are bound by law to offer gender-affirming advice. Okay, so this is what this means. If you bring your 13-year-old in to be evaluated by a physician or a psychologist, who, and maybe she has high levels of neuroticism, tilting towards depression and anxiety, and then that's making itself manifest in bodily discomfort, now that's being shaped by this cultural fad that insists that if you feel uncomfortable in your body, it's because you're of the opposite gender. This is a disaster for the coming years, because those children never needed gender change. They were convinced that they were not happy because they were not born in the right gender. A permanent decision like that cannot be made by a developing child who still doesn't understand the risks. But now you're duty bound by law, if you're a professional, to say, oh, you think you're a boy? Yeah, absolutely. You absolutely, 100%, you are. What can we do to facilitate that move forward? Jordan Peterson was having this conversation on the Joe Rogan's podcast. He stated that it is depression that manifests into body discomfort. With a young generation that is very depressed and made worse by social media, very many teenagers are falling for the woke agenda and it is spreading like wildfire. And now they're being enticed like, yeah, well, you're not unpopular. You're interestingly special. So if you just take this carrot, you know, you're the opposite sex. All of a sudden, you're not a victim. You're a brave what would you call? You're a brave seeker after your redemptive identity. And now you can be elevated and you can be treated specially. And my God, you know, if you're an unpopular teenager, how could anything be possibly more attractive than that? Well, why are teenagers gullible in that way? You know, why do they go along with the crowd? And the answer to that is, that's what you're supposed to do when you're a teenager. Woke culture has been packaged in a way to make it easily acceptable among teenagers. According to Jordan Peterson, when teenagers battle with self-conscience, they become anxious and depressed, and that is precisely when woke culture tells them that they are in the wrong body. Jordan Peterson believes woke culture is a psychological epidemic. We've tracked psychological epidemics going back 300 years. 300 years. Here's some of them. Multiple personality disorder. It cycles in society. Disappears, then there's one case, then it spreads like mad. Then there's multiple personality disorder everywhere teenage girls mostly. Then people get skeptical about it and it dies. And maybe it disappears for a whole generation or two. Then a case pops up. 
Woke culture argues that traditional cultural standards have imprisoned people in the wrong bodies, but it turns out that, many generations before us, society still dealt with similar psychological issues. At the University of Toronto when I worked there, I could see this woke nonsense emerging over decades. I really started to see it when I was at McGill University in the 90s, and I could just see it just doing this like this year after year. And Woke culture has a sense of entitlement, where people expect the world to change for them instead of taking responsibility for their own actions and improvement. And if anyone dares not to acknowledge them, they use the ultimate weapon, cancel culture. The deepest reason for cancel culture, well, I would say there's two deep reasons. One is it's a form of bullying, and it might even be a female-specific form of bullying or female. It's the form of bullying that goes after reputations, essentially, and that's a feminine form of bullying because the feminine use of aggression tends to be reputation destruction and cancel culture is a manifestation of that. Jordan Peterson has spoken extensively about the dangers of cancel culture, arguing that it threatens open dialogue and free speech. It is ironic that woke people claim to be victims of the systems in place. Meanwhile, they seek power to oppress and control people. So it's the antithesis of informed negotiation, right? If I have power over you, that means I can force you to do my will rather than negotiate with you to do our will or to allow you or to facilitate you using your will. So that's how I'm going to use power in this discussion. And this culture war we're in is fought against uh, the philosophy that presumes that it's power of that sort that structures our social relations. Cancel culture isn't about justice. It's about control. It's the mob deciding what you're allowed to say. And if you step out of line, they'll ruin your life. It is tyranny, plain and simple. The woke movement labels everyone who doesn't agree with them as an oppressor, and they side with the victims. And you're doing your power thing, and it's, it's a battle of all against all, and you want your power identity to win. So cancel culture is the logical outcome of that reasoning. Why would you, you don't engage with your opponents because there's no you to engage. There's no individual. There's Jordan Peterson expounds that cancel culture forces people to accept what they do not freely choose or what might not be best for them. That undermines people's freedom of speech and choice. Jordan Peterson knows all too well what it is like to be canceled. My clinical practice was threatened, so I had, I had three jobs. I was a university professor, I had a clinical practice, and I had a personal business. And so I wasn't that easy to take out, because you had to take me out three ways to be successful, because I could have used any of those to keep myself going. But two of them got blown out of the water. Now the third was, third actually bloomed, boomed as a consequence, so that was kind of nice. Gladly, many people still supported him. Many people never get a chance to speak after being canceled. It takes a lot of courage to speak out against the woke agenda, with all the power they have to cancel people. Jordan Peterson has been brave and an inspiration to this generation. Back to this problem. So now you're in a situation where if you do, if you have been driven by desperation to finally understand that you have to say what you have to say or pay the spiritual consequences, let's say, but now it's gone too far because there's been 3,000 micro retreats, you're going to face something like cancellation, which is justice at the hands of a vengeful mob, let's say. It's going to be pretty damn brutal. And it isn't necessarily even obvious that you'll survive. So that's a pretty rough choice. While his supporters see him as a champion of individual rights and personal responsibility, his critics accuse him of promoting outdated and harmful ideas. But one thing is certain, Jordan Peterson has not complied with the woke agenda when they tell him what to say. I watched my colleagues take micro-retreat 5,000 times. And then by the end of that, they were in a situation where they had to ask a question like, well, what do we do to not be canceled by the woke mob? And the answer was, don't let the woke mob form. Well, it has formed. It's like, yeah, 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 it has. It's a little late now. Now you're paying the price for all that avoidance. When people get canceled, everything they've built crumbles around them. As you can imagine, it is a very traumatic experience. That is why we must have conversations freely about any issue without name calling and abuse. Be careful about what you've said and what you've said in the past, and maybe it's a bit too late for that. The second thing I would say is, if you haven't done anything wrong, do not apologize. That's, that is your minute. Another area where Peterson clashes with woke culture is what's often referred to as apology culture. 
An apology means nothing if it's given under duress. Jordan Peterson continues to stand firm on his principles and humiliate woke people in debates. I'm not anti-feminist per se, because in, if it's true that there's something toxic, let's say, about masculinity per se, what that will ine inevitably mean is that as women adopt more masculine roles, traditionally, what, what is that toxicity somehow going to go away? Because no one says there's anything toxic about masculinity per se. What do you mean no one says that? People the the term that. exists. No, 